Hello, welcome to Texas Truck Channel. I'm Craig. And I'm Brian. And behind us, we've got the all new Mazda CX-90. We're at someone's lake, Nick's, Nick's Lake, Nick's, Nick's Cove. Lake, Nick's Cove. Cove, in between Sonoma, California and San Francisco, but no one cares about that. These are great driving roads that Mazda's letting us test these on. And this is the Turbo S, which means it's got the inline six. They also have a PHEV model. We've got another video for that, so make sure you check that out. But this is the one we're all excited about because it's the inline six and it's turbo, turbo, baby. turbo baby. That's what we want to talk about. But before we get to more on that in a minute, let's talk about the front. Look, this is in white. You can get other colors, but white works. It's a good white. It's pretty. It pops. Kind of hard to see on camera, but it is a good Believe paint. It, not, it does have some pearl and a pinch of metallic in it. All these, all these 690s are built in Japan, so they're all going to be J-Spec. Some people say it's good. Some people say it's bad. Wherever you're at on that, just so you know, that's where this is at. Um, grill wise, it's, you know, the overall kind of design of this CX-90 is not too offensive and modest. We'll just say that. So it's clean. I like the theme. It keeps the Mazda th corporate theme. It's clean. It looks good. You got your radar cruise control built into the logo. Brian likes that. And, uh, you know, it's a Mazda cause it's got the M there. I still think you should black that out. So it looks like the mean M, you know? So anyways, uh, <laughs> that Mazda might, people know that, that might be a radar problem. You do have some active arrow here, Brian. Look, do you see my other hand? It's uh, vector. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's, there's sunlight through there. So, yeah. um, and then before Air we leave the front though, Brian, I want to show you this. These headlights are the best in the business and they are here as well. And it's on all trim levels. You get the cheapest one that starts at 39,000 or you go up to this one that's about 59,000 topped out. It has the same headlight. It's, so just know that. It's built in Japan, which means your uh, gap panels or panel gaps are about the same, um, which is a good deal. Brian, that's how you know it's an inline six. If you had the hybrid, it would say- Oh wait, wait, you know because it says inline six. Yeah, because it says inline six. All right, okay. Otherwise it would say PHEV. Those are your only two options. Um, wait, isn't it PHEV? FEV. Fe okay, FEV. Okay. But let's move down here. We've got some nice Falcons. Falcons are always good. These are running on 21s. This is a something on here. I can't see it. Um, 275, 45, 21. It Brian looks mud and snow rating. Oh, would you look at that? Yeah, so you can off-road it. Sure. Even though you don't have the black uh, little guards here, you can still you can still off-road it. Yeah, it's all wood, right? I want to on something that's peeking through here, and that is the upper uh, knuckle mount. This is a dual wishbone suspension. This that's is not right. a McPherson. That's right. And we'll have a full review later. This is kind of our first drive with the Turbo S. So we'll just kind of speak to that. And when we get it, put it through its paces, when we get it back at home, we'll, we'll do the have, full technical and everything else. Well, Brian, we've got a nice chrome uh, door sills here. I want to show you this on the doors. Look how thick and serious that is. Kind of interesting and kind of goes up underneath there. It keeps it, but you know what? Look, there's weather stripping there. How many cars have weather stripping on the bottom of the door? None. We actually get mud. This would be a mud shelf without it, by the way. <laughs> right, right. So, and it's really quiet. We'll get to that more in the ride and drive, but let's keep coming. Come on, let's keep going. It's funny, the PEV, PEV, PEV. <laughs> If you hit this, you have to go unlock it. This one you don't. It opens right up and fell. Oh man. Well, um, no, no, partial, partial. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, you're right. Phil. Anyways, you're right, uh, come on. Everybody just needs to do what needs. To, uh, look here, Brian. It says premium recommended. More on that in a minute and what that means. Um, also, super recommende. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Moving on the back, I like the tail lights here. They actually look really good, especially when the lights are on. We did some uh, footage earlier, and when the lights are on, it. It lights this part here and around there. Kind of, I like that little kind of hooks. hooks. Yeah. I, I like that. I think it looks good. Traditional Mazda um, styling. Again, it's conservative, but fun. Got a G You'll notice one. that it has, yeah, we've got Skyactiv G and E. E means we have a 48 volt mild hybrid system on this. You get that on all the um, inline six models, and that's supposed to assist with engagement and start stop and things like that. Um, that's the idea and, there. And torque fill. But Brian, let's get to under the hood. That's let's what we might do it. Are you ready? Sure. It's an all new inline six from Mazda Brown. Check it out. Here we go. Oh, what the hell? First off, it's got hood struts, so I don't have to hold the hood up. That's nice. Uh, number premium. two, number two, premium. Um, I want you to see this. Look at these little, this is nice. Cause you know what we do on every press car? We rip these off. Rip these off. So now you can Look open it up that. and see. Look at this. Don't open that right wait, now. It's really wait, hot. What's that? Holy uh, crap. Okay. Well, if we know what we're doing. We're idiots. Look at okay, that. Okay, there we go. So. Pretty nice. Um, you get the. Um, it's like they knew we were going to rip this off. It's like they knew. Yeah. So, Brian, look over here, though. This is what we really want to see. See that? Looks That's like a, a big old honking, stinking turbo. Looks like a turp ski over here. That's what we want. That's all that matters. So, this is good for 340 horsepower and 369 pound feet of torque on that Super Recommande fuel and the door over there. You can also put. Brian, I want you to know something. Huh. 
Yeah, you're pointing out something. You'll notice that, yeah, the middle of the engine is kind of right in the middle of the front here's axle. The, here, well, hang on. Here's the center axle right yep. there. And the, yeah, and so we got one, two cylinders on that side. Wait a minute, that means there's four behind it. There's four behind it. It's almost it's a front mid engine. No, it is. A front it, basically, mid. it basically is, yeah. yeah. It basically is. Um, and we pointed out on the other one, you can see in our other video, but the, st the motor from, well, there's more engine on this one. So oh, there's more engine, it. so it's hard to see, but, the but steering there's a steering rack down there. Steering rack there, down there, instead of up here, which means you get better fuel and response and all that stuff. And the steering's in front of the axle, not behind yes, it. Yes, it is a front steering. We'll have a technical review for that later. You can put regular fuel in this, even though Super Rocky Monde is in there. Um, if you do that, all that happens is your car will blow up. I'm no, kidding. No, I'm kidding. Right, right. I'm kidding. Your car won't blow up. You'll just get 319 horsepower instead. And Mazda actually published that number for you, so you know it's okay to do it. So enough of that, though. Let's get let's get it to the interior. See what Brian's got to say on the interior. That was smooth. All right, boys and girls, time to get down to business. First things first, pop the hatch. Actually, I lied. There's one more thing to get talk about. Get down here. Get down here. It's not mounted on this model. There's not one here. But this puppy can tow 5,000 pounds. We'll throw some b-roll in it at pulling a really expensive camper at the house over there but that's pretty cool and there's actually a tow mode once you plug this thing in if you had the tow package tow mode would engage and it uses all of its driving systems including sky active to help with trailer sway control which is pretty cool so keep that in mind if you do need where's, a tow, the, where's the exhaust oh yeah where's the exhaust yeah, oh, right, right here, right here. I hand suction. It's down here. Is it hot? Is it hot? A little bit. A little okay, bit. Okay. All right, all right. Interior, interior. All right, but there's no fake tips. That's the news here. That's the real news. But there are actually no tips you can see. So, in the back, this is a three-row vehicle. And look at how much room we have here. Ooh. This is our camera backpack. It's actually a really big backpack. It can lay long ways, right there. Move all the junk out of the way, and there is a lift-up compartment. You've got all your tire stuff, which I don't see a spare tire. And this thing probably comes up, but it looks like it's lashed down. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Over here, 120 volt. 1500 watt plug, which means you can charge the bare necessities. And by that, I mean like, I don't know, laptops, cell phones, camera batteries. You plug a coffee pot into that, pop, it not will happening. not work. Over here, well, we have nothing, but if on the PHEV, or the PHEV, you, you would be able to plug in 1500 watts, which is really cool. I do wish that something like that would happen here, but it's not the hybrid, I understand. Now, Craig, this is a premium vehicle. Oh yeah, look at that color. Headrest are up. Even in the third row. Where's the button to put this down? You don't need one. You don't need one because those are crap and they always break anyways. Look at that. Voila. It just falls down way faster Much than better. anything that's power and will definitely Wait, wait, wait. How's it come back up? How's oh, it come it's back really up? complicated. Let me do this real quick. Oh, that's it? All right, that's it. Second oh, row. Okay, next. All right, Craig, first things first, let's check out the third row. Flip this puppy forward. You can do that too on your side. I'm going to do a very graceful... Come back. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Whew. I'm in the back. What's the... Hey, only two seats back there? Only two seats, but it's more contoured. Oh, contour. So let's talk about configurations. I'll be honest, I'm 6'4". I'm not really going to fit back here. No, Probably not safe right. either. Yeah. But if you're like six or under, you can go to dinner on this. It'll be fine. That's the real news here. Oh. In the back, you're not totally confined. You have tie downs, USB-C, dual uh, cup holders with a phone slot in the middle, and a side A vent to keep your air vent to keep your knees super frozen, but not your face. <laughs> so there is that. Oh, business class. Here we go. Yeah. First of all, you get the tan leather seats. Ooh, the seat reclines back nice. Look, panoramic sunroof. I have plenty of headroom. That's a big deal for me because most second row crossovers with this giant pano roof, I just bash my head. Look how comfy this is. Very nice. Close the door. You've got wood grain, two-tone door, and peasant walkers to keep the haters out. All you commenters that don't like things that we do, that's what that's for. In the middle, you've got a box for things, cup holders, and you're liking the seat, but it is a nicer seat to sit in. Down here, triple zone climate control, that's standard on all of the CX-90s, but you do have heated and ventilated second row seats. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. Take that tell you ride for the second row, or first row. All right, boys and girls. Ooh, you likey. Let's get in here. Plenty of headroom. We've driven this car quite a bit today, actually all day. And the number one thing I want to say compared to the CX-9 is this seat is extremely, extremely comfortable. Very happy with that. It's wider. It's wider, yes. Now. The CX-9, if you've watched the reviews on that, I've got some enraged feedback on this console because it does this for some reason. I've got good news. That is resolved here. While the console is still wide and has good storage, it does not bash your knee and it does not feel unnatural. On the dash, Ooh. as journalists, I talk about soft touch all the time. <laughs> this is suede, and all day we've just been doing this. That's all we care about. So, good job. Um, that looks great. Two-tone on the steering wheel. Let me show the people here real quick. Show this guy up. Look at this. The rim is black. The wheel is tan, 
Good controls. You do have lane centering on this, and they have an all-new drive system for that, which works great. No ping-ponging, nothing crazy there. Start button. Let's get this thing cranked up. Get all the bings and bongs out of the way. Lots of bings and bongs. Bing bong, bing bong, bing bong. Okay. Drive modes. You have got sport, and your gauges change on sport. We'll set that in gauge. There we go. Yeah. Normal, which you just saw that. And then let's go to off-road. Which what off road does is it actually starts to engage 50 50 um, or more 50 50 than less torque split. This thing defaults to 90 10 and will adjust as you're driving to different things. You know who explains that better? Hmm. Dave Coleman. Oh, yeah. Check that out here. It sort of starts out about 90 10 split okay. and then it's adjusting on the fly all the time. And that's kind of what I was asking. What, what is the different torque split on the different modes? I guess that would make the biggest change um, when you it, change the modes? Or? It's, no, it really depends on, on how you're driving and what surface you're oh, on. So okay. it's got three different algorithms going on okay. uh, all the time trying to figure out the best balance. Mm -hmm. um, there's obviously a slip algorithm. If a tire slips, sure. it'll re react very quickly. Right. Um, there's also one that's sort of trying to get ahead of the slip algorithm so we don't have a loss of control in our recovery. Mm -hmm. And it's trying to kind of predict where the grip is. And, mm -hmm. and it's very easy to predict where the grip's going to be if all four tires are on the same surface. Mm -hmm. The most grip will be at the tire that has the most vertical load on it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so we just have an algorithm that calculates weight transfer. We know the center gravity height of the car. We know mm -hmm. where, where everything started out. Mm -hmm. And so we just use this weight transfer algorithm to send torque around to whatever uh, okay. corner has loaded the most. Um, and then Anytime you send more torque to the normally undriven wheels, so mm -hmm. in this case when we're sending torque to the front, mm -hmm, but on our mm -hmm. front drive cars when we're sending torque to the back, mm -hmm. you're coupling those axles together and making the car not really want to turn anymore. Right. Like you put a truck in four-wheel drive right. locked, yeah. it just goes straight, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And so if we're running 10% front, that means we've got this light preload on those clutches connecting those wheels, and that creates a little bit of damping. When you turn the car, it's resisting a little bit from those mm -hmm. clutches rubbing against mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have that third algorithm is looking at the driver's steering input oh, okay. and when the driver is turning it will back off on whatever torque split it happens to have at that moment some amount in proportion to that steering input mm -hmm. to make the car turn in naturally okay. not have that resistance okay and that last little bit like uh, initially when you're designing an all-wheel drive system, you think that, that yaw damping is the big negative side effect that comes from an all-wheel drive system. Mm -hmm. It turns out it's a really positive tuning tool for us because we mm -hmm. can really fine tune the, the steering response and the steering feedback because you feel it in your hands. Mm -hmm. If you change that torque split, you can feel the, the, mm -hmm. the, the buildup and the steering change. Mm -hmm. um, and that lets us really fine tune and make the steering buildup communicate to the driver how the car is going to turn. Okay. So it's one of the last things we tune in our process. Yeah. Uh, we get down to the end, we start you know, doing little tiny tweaks to the all-wheel drive algorithm just to get it dialed in so it just tells you exactly where it's going to go. Okay, welcome back. You do have a nice big screen here. It is not touchscreen in the native system, but if you have Apple CarPlay connected, it does become touchscreen all of a sudden. Interesting. Which I like that a lot. The shifter. This reminds me of... God, I hate to even say this. Ooh. It reminds me of Nissan or Mitsubishi Ooh. a little bit. Like yeah. You have to go over and then back, and it's not a real shifter. It's a digi shifter. But it's fine because you still have paddles. This controls an eight-speed transmission that is in-house designed, and that is so they can control where the weight is in the transmission, how narrow it can be so it can fit in this well and not take over foot well. And it does not have a torque converter, Craig. It has a single wet clutch in it to take the place of the torque converter. And look, it drives a little different. And we'll talk about that as soon as we drive it, which is right now. No. 30, 40, 50, 60. In 5.9? 5.9 is not bad. Not bad. Okay, I'll take that. Now look, I'll be honest. Got to get this out of the way right now. Yeah. This is a pre-production car. Yes. The whole time we've been driving the m 6 has had a harmonic balance problem. We're not judging it hard because this pre-pro and it's been out of launch. It's been beat on all week. Just know that we're going to get this on loan back home and it's going to make a lot more sense there. We're going to do our full gamut of testing. I bet it is faster than that at home. Right, right. So, yeah, we're trying to be, we don't want to be too harsh on this. Um, no. We think it's probably faster than that. That's what we're saying, um, yeah. And so that's really it. As far as everything else goes, though, ride and drive, we can speak to that, and we're going to comment on that. 100%. And, uh, let's just get to that now, Brian, because there's a lot of goodies going on here. Oh, yeah. First off, with kinematic something. Uh, KPC. KPC. Kinematic posture control. That's it. 
That's it. Kinetic posture control. Not kinetic posture control. Not, you know, different. Right. Is all, it is, not, don't ever say it's torque vectoring because David Cohen will come through the camera and, and hurt you, okay? By the way, I said that to him earlier and he about jumped <laughs> me at the table. He was really nice about it. He was it. very but, nice about it, yeah. But the point is, it's all about loading the car up properly, working in harmony with the suspension right. when you, as you enter a turn so that the car drives the way you expect it to drive, it which is very does. interesting. It does. It'll do little things like barely slightly touch, touch the brake, but like ever so slightly, not, well, a, not a bunch. Well, but it'll, it'll also take like the brake on the inside wheel right. ever so much. And he explained right. it to us, it would have to apply 10 no, times no. the force that it does for the driver to even notice it, notice it doing anything. Right. So it's in the background the whole time. The yeah. MX-5 uses this technology as well. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you right now, this thing turns in better than a three-wheel crossover should be doing. Well, this is a big SUV. It's big. That's what yeah. this is. Yeah. And it's we've been hucking it around on these little roads, these beautiful roads. Yeah, they're awesome. And it's that part is working quite well. Oh, 100%. Um, yeah, and so there's that. And also, it'll do things like when you lift off the gas, like it, when it predicts you're going to a corner, mm -hmm. it uses that. Three algorithms to do that. Mm -hmm. What it will do is then actually... Um, lift off throttle a little more than you think you need to mm -hmm. to pitch the weight of the car forward a pinch. Just so about, a pinch. It's all about keeping it balanced through the corners. Right. Yeah. And not get in the way of your intuitive natural drive. Right. And it does that well. We can report it does that very well. Yeah. All right. Can we talk powertrain a little bit? Let's do it. Because we've been waiting for this and that's probably the biggest deal here, honestly. I love the way that Mazda has approached yes. the handling and the assistance in those features. So many cars nowadays they get too cute with some of that. Right. They're trying to take the driver out of the equation. Moss is doing the opposite. They're right. trying to make sure you're still behind the wheel. Yeah. Usually it ruins the experience. This is actually enhancing and making the experience. It's making you feel more alive, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Not a zoomy, but more alive. For right. sure. Right. Um, also powertrain. So you've got the three liter inline six, all new. Mm -hmm. Now we've noticed that we're not on throttle. It's very smooth. Yes. And I'm going to leave it at that. I don't talk about any more about the engine until we get it on loan back at home. Agreed. Because I think there's something else going on with this one. But, but I do also want you to talk about the 48 volt hybrid system right. and how it's actually assisting a little bit in between revs and things like that. That's where I was going. So I've actually noticed, he, and Coleman explained this to us very well, he explained that that 48 volt system is not just a start stop system. Because right. there's systems like this, like Stellantis mm -hmm. uses it on their Jeeps and their trucks, mm -hmm. and, and Audi has a version of it, BMW has a version, they all have a version of it. Mm -hmm. And they replace the starter with this belt driven generator starter thing. Mm -hmm. This isn't that. This is not that. He made it very clear. Right. Yeah. This is a 48 volt battery system mm -hmm. that is controlling an electric motor that's sandwiched in between the engine and transmission. Right. And what it's doing is it's using that to torque fill. It mm -hmm. has up to 100 and I think 10 foot pounds of torque rating. Mm -hmm. And what it can do is while the turbos, because the turbo is not this itty bitty only low spooling turbo, mm -hmm. it revs out like it should. Well, mm -hmm. to do that, they needed to fill the torque down low. Right. They use it for that mostly. This is, this is helping with all that. It's a helper. It's a really it, interesting way they went about that. Yes, because they didn't do it for eco reasons. They did it for making it a more broad power band and keeping the turbo big enough. Mm -hmm. Also, as you're downshifting, I've noticed it just coming in and out of parking lots and stuff. This does not use a traditional torque converter. It uses right. a single wet clutch disc. Mm -hmm. And what that allows it to do is it can couple and uncouple very quickly for this. Mm -hmm. It uses that motor to then up the revs of the of the engine to rev match when it's downshifting. Mm -hmm. You don't even notice this stuff unless you're listening for it. Right, right. It's just so intuitive and so good. I'm really happy with that. Um, also, just like the PHEV, it has the old rev system and the dynamics never change when when power is moved around. It's always leaning towards rear wheel drive. It's consistent. All right, Brian, last but not least, I want you to talk about the, there's a dynamic, deep, is it DPS? What is that? Dynamic positioning system. Oh, driver positioning Dri I'm system. I'm sorry, driver positioning yes, system. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. You, you, you got to sit through that. Um, we got some footage of that. But yeah, we'll put that in here. What does a DPS do? There's a little camera up here. Right what, right. what is that doing and what's that all about? So what you do is you get in the car and you configure your profile with the vehicle. What you do is you tell it how tall you are. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't ask your weight. Don't worry about that because it wants to know how <laughs> tall you are. And then it will configure where it thinks everything should be. And that includes the steering column, how far away, how up and down side mirrors, where they aim, the seating position, all that stuff. And I did that, Craig. Mm -hmm. And they were all just about wrong for me. Now, I don't want to rip on this system. It's a great starting point and it gets you 90, 90 maybe 95% perfect. Well, what's, what's really cool is what it does is that it puts you in where it thinks you should be based on an average height and torso sure. and all that. And we kind of messed that up. So, yeah, but you get, it, but but you get in there, but also a lot of people drive in positions that they don't realize are wrong. So Mazda's oh, like, like, all about the driving experience. They're like, look, this is the real driving experience you should have. And a lot of 
requires the proper seating position. Yes. So what it does, it kind of gets you in the ballpark, and then you can find you know, and it tells you, it talks you through the steps. Yeah. All right. Check the where you're at with a foot pedal. Can, can you go? Can you can you pivot on your heel, brake the gas without straining your ankle? Without straining your ankle, and then if not, move it forward or backwards. Exactly. And then it does the same with the mirrors and the and the heads up display right. and the steering wheel and all that fun stuff. And then once you're done with it, it saves your profile. And while you're doing that, it makes you at the very end, kind of like you do with your phone with your uh, face facial recognition. Right. You take your sunglasses off. It says make you look look at that mirror, look at that mirror with your sunglasses done. off, and it knows who you are. It saves hundreds of different settings right. from Including climate control, tone settings in the radio, bass and treble, everything. Uh, ventilated or heated seats, yeah. uh, wherever you left that, and it will do that from now on while you're driving. Right. So as time goes on, it's adjusting as you're adjusting. Right. And you don't have to hit set whatever right it just saves it so then the next time let's say brown and i swap i get in a car it recognizes my face puts all those hundreds of settings to where i want right and then when he gets back in the car same thing that's really cool and you still have memory seats as well that's not gone yeah you still still do that if you don't if you don't want to mess with light you can just do that right um i want to say the interior in this is awesome this color combo is great absolutely i like the burgundy color better than white um, to own but this interior color is freaking awesome it is all that being said, we're on twisty roads in California, and I just want to say this thing handles awesome. It does. It does not have a trick suspension, other than it's well made. It's a five-link <laughs> rear, a double wishbone front. They're talking about anti-dive. Yeah. Like, or I'm sorry, anti-squat and brake yeah. dive. Yeah. That's stuff that race cars do. Right. Right? You don't hear <laughs> anybody else talking about that. It should that. not be in a three-row three crossover. Exactly. The yeah. Honda Pilot doesn't give a flip about that. And my Honda in particular, but that segment doesn't care. That's impressive, and that shines through when you're driving this thing. And look, we asked the Mazda guys, we just straight up asked them, was this originally supposed to be in a sedan, a car, more of a sport-focused car? And basically, yeah. yes, but nobody buys those. Nobody buys crossovers. Right. And so that's why so, we got this. So they said, let's make a good crossover. Let's make an awesome crossover, and they did. And they did. Now, we also asked one of these in the showrooms. The answer is now. Yep. So if you really want one, just go get it. Um, also... You're gonna hear some people that are incorrect say, oh, this thing's too expensive. Because people think Mazda's not a premium brand. Mm-hmm. Guess what, buddy? This thing starts out at Volkswagen Atlas pricing, which is 39. Cheap. Yeah, yes. 39, nothing. That's and for, you, for this, that's nothing. And you still get an inline six, just a little less power on it. Yep. That's it. Mm-hmm. And it goes all the way up to the good stuff. So, all that being said, I'm really happy with this. I'm impressed with it. I can't wait to get it at home and do our full de- uh, testing, off road testing, zero to 60 to gamut. Absolutely. Thanks for watching. See you next time. See you next time.